Hello, hello, hello. Douglas Shepard here and Brent Tanner with DIY Pool Guys and Phoenician Pool Service and Repair. Hope you're having a great day. Today we want to talk to you. We're doing green pool cleanups. And on a green pool cleanup, if you're not doing it with water in, you have to drain the pool completely. And so we're going to teach you how to drain your pool, things to watch out for. But also, you may just drain your pool and flip the water. It may not be green. You may not have algae. You may not need an acid wash but you still need to know this draining process. So when you drain your own pool, it's not necessarily hard, but there are some things that you need to watch out because you can cause some problems if you drain your pool incorrectly or don't turn some things off, okay? So number one, this video, what we're teaching you is made for the, the greater Phoenix area, okay? And it's for a gunite pool, which is either plaster or mini pebble. Vinyl pools, you cannot drain all the way. In, in certain states, you can't drain the pool all the way. It'll shift and you have massive problems, okay? But in Arizona, you can drain your pool as long as it's under 85 degrees for plaster and 90 for mini pebble. The reason is because if it's too hot and you drain it, it will pop the little plaster all into pieces and the mini pebble can crack and be messed up. So make sure that for mini pebble, you're under 90 and for plaster that you are under 85 degrees. Two other things to watch out for is your pump, your motor, it is on a timer every day, maybe six hours, maybe 12 hours in Phoenix, we're closer to 12. So if you just drain the pool and you don't shut the power off, your motor is going to come on, it's going to run, it's going to run dry, overheat, and now you have to buy a new motor. So always, 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 before you drain the pool, go to your, your breaker box and turn off all the stuff that's connected to the pool, heater, pool, light pool light any of that just shut it off so it can't come on while the pool is empty the last thing is on your pool you're going to have an automatic water leveler if you don't then you have to worry about it but if you do you have to shut off the water source otherwise while you're draining the pool you're going to be filling the pool so you're just wasting water okay so shut off the automatic water leveler shut off the power and then we get to the draining part you need some kind of a drain you can rent these at home depot you can rent them at pool stores um, they have smaller ones that hook up to a water hose. They do work, but they take a really long time. So one like this is a large pump. I think it's one and a half horsepower. Drain your whole pool in like six hours. So we just usually start it before bedtime, let it run overnight, come back out. Um, but you do want to put it in the deepest part of the pool, which is where your main drains are. So you set it in the deepest part of the pool. Make sure it's upright. A big mistake people make is they grab this by the electrical cord and they pick it up to either put it in the pool or to take it out. That will break the pump and uh, causes major problems. So you either need a handle or some kind of rope attached to it so that you can drop it in and pull it out without destroying the pump. We have some heavy-duty hoses here. You can also use the two-inch soft hoses, um, but they you got to be careful because if those break overnight, now you have a flooded yard. But these are really good, $50 hoses that uh, don't break, they don't leak. Get four or five of those, it does really well. You need an extension cord if you uh, don't can't reach all the way to a place to plug in the drain. As soon as you plug in the drain, it's gonna start emptying the pool. Some pumps have two, two attachments. If you just plug it straight into this one, it will drain and drain and keep draining, but this little float that makes it shut off is not activated, so you could burn up your pump and it's gonna make a loud noise until you come out and unplug it. So if you plug this in, this is the regulator for the float valve, and now if it stays upright, as soon as the water gets to a certain point, it will shut off on its own, and you don't have to worry about burning up the pump. Here are a couple photos of just what this pool looked like before we drained it. Uh, you can see it was fairly green. Uh, it wasn't uh, it was so green you couldn't see the bottom, but it definitely, uh, needed some attention and uh, we're just going to pull the water out of this and put some more back in. Where do I drain my pool to, right? That's the question. This house has sewer caps that were easy to find. Um, so you'll see there's one here, one here. You just get a screwdriver. This unscrews and you drop your hose down in it, but don't go too far. Or you will get toilet paper on it. You want to go to the one closest to the house, okay? So even though this makes sense that it's closer to the street, you want to go to the one closest to the house. Now, I've never had a problem, but I just always tell people, check a toilet once you turn it on. Make sure nothing's flooding, but it shouldn't. It should go right to the street. What do you do when you can't find these? Because old houses are covered in landscape, 
Maybe it's in the side of your house. I do not recommend going in the side of your house. You can flood it. So at that point, you have to figure out what are your city regulations? Can you run it to the street? Can you run it into your yard and do it slowly? Um, a lot of times we'll just run it to the street and run it overnight. But some cities will find you um, if you don't go into your sewer caps. So you may have to dig them up and find them. But that is where you put your water and uh, be good to go. I'm going to show you how to shut off the valve for the auto leveler. So every, most modern pools that have been built since probably the 2000s have an auto leveler on it. It's usually a water line attached to the pool that fills it up with something similar to like a toilet valve if you are a toilet float. A lot of homeowners are like, I don't know where to find that. How do you do that? What we generally do and tell people is look for the closest location of where your water hose would be. You can see this customers, they have water hose right here. There's usually a line coming off of it that looks like this that supplies water to the pool to fill that up. And so if you can't find it easily, look in the backyard for the different locations of the water spigots where the hoses might be. On rare occasions, they're attached to a landscape valve. Um, and we can show you that um, in a different video. Yeah, basically what you do here is you find that line and you turn it off just like this. That turns off the supply line to the auto leveler. And that's all that there is to it. And this is how you would turn it back on. But if it's parallel, that means it's open and it's running. If it's perpendicular, it means it's off. Again, this means that the pool supply line is on. And this means that the pool supply line is off. Hey, real quick, how to shut off the breaker to the pool pump. This you want to do for sure before you drain a pool. Most circuit breakers like this, traditional in most neighborhoods, you'll see usually at the bottom of this, you have something labeled pool pump. Um, pool light, different things like this. This has pool pump and pool light. We're gonna simply shut that off. And now you know that the pool pump's not gonna turn on in the middle of the night when there's no water in the pool. It's that simple. Power's on here, power's off there. Now you'll see that I'm trying to feed it under the fence. In this particular home, we can do that. Once you feed it under the fence, we do wanna put a rock over the top of it once it's down in there. If you need to, you can put it over the top of the fence. Uh, if you don't have to put it over the top fence, feed it through like this. Uh, we really just want to get it from the front yard to the backyard. Here I am opening the sewer cap that we talked about that is closest to the house and just feeding this in, uh, I'd say two or three feet, not too far down, um, but just enough so that it will hold and then put that rock on top of it. After you've gotten it run from the front to the backyard, you do want to make sure that the line is straight, not coiled up. If so, you're going to have problems with the water. I am attaching an additional hose. The hose wasn't long enough to reach from the front yard to the backyard. Um, so you can just see that's just making the connection with the particular types of hoses that I have chosen to use here. Guys, we're going to show you how to drop a sump pump into your pool to do the drain. First thing, you want to hook the electrical up over here. You can follow this extension cord over to the house. Just plug it in anywhere on the outside of the house, preferably. That has good power. We run that in. We showed in the other video how there can be multiple plugs here. This middle one is for the float switch. And then we're going to put that all together like this so we have a good connection. We're going to make sure this doesn't fall in the pool. So we're going to put that far enough away where it doesn't. You can see here... We have the rope. This is what we're going to hold with. I'm going to guide and direct with this, but I'm not going to apply any pressure to that. But we're going to try and swing this in as close to the middle of the pool as we possibly can while we're holding onto the rope. So we take this up. We're just going to swing it, and we're just going to throw it in. As soon as we do that, you can see it's filling up because that float switch went up. It's immediately getting water to that. As soon as you have water flowing through the hose, you do want to walk down and follow the line of the hose. Number one, to make sure there's no kinks and to make sure there's no leaks, that the connections are good. You can see I'm doing that here. I've also run around to the front. The hose was a little kink here, so I'm straightening it up to get the best flow possible. Um, you can't always get it straight, but you do the best that you can um, and just make sure that water is not flowing outside. Now, once the pump is flowing, we do just let it run until the pool is empty. The float switch will turn it off on its own, and it will have about, usually about that much water left in it. Once that's done, we usually come back the next day or whenever it is 
got to the point that you can do this. You can see here, what I'm trying to do is just in the pool, while I have my boots on, I'm going to, uh, I'm just lifting up on the float switch here so that you can uh, just manually empty the rest of the water out. Um, I got sick of standing there doing that, and so I'm actually overriding the float switch. You can see uh, the second uh, connection there. I just remove it and bypass it so that it's automatically uh, just doing that until it's completely done. It's safe to do that if you are there standing next to it. You definitely do not want to do that if you walk away as you can burn up your sump pump. Once you have this uh, taken care of, you'll see the pool will get down to about this level right here. There is still some water in the bottom, so I do get my shop back, and I just get as much out of there as I possibly can. Uh, this particular vac, I forgot how many gallons it holds, but once it is full, you do not need to walk it out of the pool and pick it up. Just grab the sump pump and put it right inside of the shop vacuum and then suck that out and continue to do that over and over until you have all the water out of the pool. And do keep in mind, any water that's left in the bottom of the pool can create a water ring uh, that will stain the surface if left there too long. So what it'll look like after you have all the water out. And especially if it's going to be a little bit of time before you actually do the chlorine rinse or the acid wash, you want to make sure you get all the water out to avoid that water ring we're talking about. And this is going to wrap up this video. You can see some after pictures once we had done some work on the pool and filled it back up. Um, we definitely recommend you do that every two to three years. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those and we'll respond to them. We appreciate uh, you being with us for this video.